On April 6, 1917, the United States declared war on Germany. Mr. Carl e. Schmidt of the Carl Schmidt Company of Detroit offered $35,000 to establish a second base hospital from the city of Detroit, the first being Base Hospital 17. He communicated first with Major Bert R. Shirley, Medical Officer Reserve Corps, Dean of Detroit College of Medicine and Surgery, later to become Wayne State University Medical School. On April 11, 1917, the American Red Cross and the Army Medical Department granted authority for the establishment of Base Hospital 36. It was to be equipped by the Detroit College of Medicine and Surgery and also to be recruited from the faculty, staff, graduates, and students from that college. Because of the generosity of Mr. Carl E. Schmidt, Base Hospital 36 was able to enter the medical supplies and equipment market early and quickly complete buying all the supplies and equipment they needed to make it possible to take the first 1,000 bed hospital overseas. On August 23rd at 8 a.m., Base Hospital 36 was mobilized to the Michigan State Fairgrounds. That's when the men started to report. The first four days were employed in getting the camp ready for use. On Monday, August 27th, Major Hiram A. Phillips, Medical Corps, reported for duty as a commanding officer, and the regular work of the unit began. Men of Base Hospital 36 first learned how to drill and become soldiers. Then they had a series of lectures on the rudiments of first aid and anatomy. The way a base hospital is organized is that you have the professional staff, which is made up of officers. These are the doctors, the dentists, and the lab managers. They're all men. Then you have the nursing staff, which is made up of all women who are registered nurses. Most of these were recruited within the city of Detroit, but there were some from Toledo, Ohio, and other areas. Then you have the enlisted corps, which is made up of men who became technicians and orderlies. September 5th, the nurses who had received their orders on September 3rd to proceed to New York were sworn in at the Michigan State Fairgrounds and proceeded on the 6th to New York. The next day, the Red Cross flag and a guide on were presented to the unit by the Women's Chapter of the Macomb County Red Cross. Arriving in New York at 8 a.m. on September 7th, the nurses were first quartered in the U.S. Army Hospital No. 1 at Gun Hill Road and Bainbridge Avenue. On September 29th, they were transferred to St. Mary's Hospital in Hoboken. In New York, they were drilled by the officers of Presbyterian Base Hospital No. 2 and October 1st carried the Detroit and American flags and marched down 5th Avenue from 79th Street to Washington Square in a Red Cross parade made up of hospital units already mobilized in New York City and all of the local Red Cross chapters in the New York area. Meanwhile, back in Detroit, the citizens responded liberally to the call for support for Base Hospital 36. X-ray equipment was donated along with a number of automobiles which can be seen here at a presentation ceremony at Belle Isle. On October 19th, Base Hospital 36 finally received their orders to proceed to France. They were to leave on October 26th and to proceed to New York. Base Hospital 36 and the 16th Engineers were the only two units during the First World War that were based at the Michigan State Fairgrounds. On October 27, 1917, at 3 p.m., the SS Ordona left Pier 54, New York, for, heading for France. One passenger, Mrs. Marielle Burgess, dietitian for Base Hospital 36, had to remain in the United States because Army regulations excluded the wives of officers from service with the Army overseas. Her husband, commander of the 16th Regiment of Engineers, Colonel Harry Burgess, was already in France. Traveling with Base Hospital 36 to France were the 88th, 89th, and 90th Aero Squadrons, along with a detachment from Base Hospital 21. 
On November 17, 1917, Base Hospital 36 arrived at Vital, France, known for its mineral waters and also its sparkling drinking water, which is bottled and sold throughout the world. The first few days, there was little work in few military formations. Base Hospital 36 occupied a set of buildings that, before the war, were resort hotels, but during the war were used by the French Army as Army hospitals. They were Hotels de Palace, Cirrus, and the Sources. Vittel, France would become the home of Base Hospital 36 and also Base Hospital 23. It was located about 40 miles behind the front lines. This sector of the Western Front would eventually be occupied by the American forces about six months later. During the month of December 1917, the first month Base Hospital 36 was in operation, they received 895 American patients and one French civilian. Of these, five died, three from pneumonia and two from other causes. On Christmas Eve 1917, Christmas carols were sung in hospitals A and C by several enlisted men and nurses, led by Miss Hammond and her cello, the patients eagerly listening in the darkened wards and corridors. On Christmas Day, there was a religious service with the singing of carols and Holy Communion, well attended by officers, nurses, and enlisted men. In the afternoon at Hospital A, a small Christmas tree was set up. A Victrola played Christmas carols, along with a recitation by Army Nurse Ferguson, and a short address by the chaplain, followed by a distribution of Red Cross gifts. This program was repeated at Hospital C. At the two hospitals, 500 gifts were distributed to more than 200 patients. During the month of January 1918, Base Hospital 36 treated 764 Americans and 36 French civilians. During the month of February, they treated 312 Americans, four French civilians, and 101 French soldiers. During March of 1918, they treated 489 American soldiers, five French civilians, 90 French soldiers, and 19 Italian soldiers. During April 1918, they treated 90 U.S. soldiers, two French civilians, and one French soldier. During May, they treated 444 U.S. soldiers, seven French civilians, 205 French soldiers, and three Italian soldiers. During June, they treated 100 U.S. soldiers and 338 British soldiers. On May 30, 1918, Memorial Day, there was a tribute to the memory of the brave soldiers, American and French, who gave their lives for the Allied cause. During the month of July 1918, Vital France was a scene of great festivities. Base Hospital 23 joined Base Hospital 36 in a huge parade on July 4th, and the newly organized post band played while addresses were made by French and American officers. A proclamation was issued by the mayor calling upon the French citizens to honor that day. On July 14th, it was another day of parade, feast, and ceremony. It was the French National Day. Impressive services were held in the town hall and cemetery, honoring the fallen French soldiers. During the month of July, Base Hospital 36 was treating over 2,500 patients. Beginning with August 1918, the American soldiers coming into Base Hospital were increasing daily because more American soldiers were being poured into the front lines to stop the German offensive. By September 1918, over 600 American soldiers came daily to Base Hospital 36. By the end of September 1918, Base Hospital 36 has over 3,000 patients. The American Armed Forces have moved from stopping the Germans to taking the offensive. The number of casualties increase. There is rumor that the Germans are seeking an armistice. However, they are discounted, but it makes for a good story. Finally, in November, they celebrate both the false armistice and the real armistice, which ended the war on November 11, 1918. After signing the armistice, the job of the personnel at Base Hospital 36 was to prepare their patients for transport back to the United States. 
there was a victory Thanksgiving celebration in which the cooks outdid themselves. During December 1918, the cleaning up process continues at Base Hospital 36. All the hospitals are closed except for Hospital B, and the shipping of equipment to a salvage base is being accomplished. By the last days of January 1919, Base Hospital 36 is closed. All of their equipment has been shipped to a salvage base. The personnel are simply waiting for orders to go back to the United States. During the month of February 1919, the personnel from Base Hospital 36 received orders to proceed to the French coast and await orders for transport back to the United States. Finally, on April 13th, they received their orders and left the coast of France. Arriving in the United States on April 25th, on May 1st, the personnel from Base Hospital 36 arrive at Camp Custer near Battle Creek, Michigan. On May 2nd, they are discharged from the Army. Base Hospital 36 is no longer in existence, although it will be reactivated during World War II.